blessings beloved Jesus Christ of Nazareth is my Lord and my Savior the God in whom I trust he is eternally seated on the throne above the heaven of heavens and I humbly present myself before him I want to say something about when the enemy comes against us to test us what he will do is he will set up false premises upon which he will try to engage you in an argument It says in Proverbs 26, 4 to 5, Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest you be like him yourself. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. The self-confident fool thinks he too highly of himself and his opinions, and he shares them freely. This is why we must humble ourselves before God and know that by his Holy Spirit, he will give us all that we need to speak as a saint of God as one who puts their faith in Jesus Christ that we will confute every tongue that rises up against us the Bible says no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against you you shall confute now you don't have to have a conversation on a premise that poses jurisdiction where it doesn't have it for example if say for example somebody wants to go to court they want to remove guardianship or revoke guardianship from a man um, and say you can't uh, you can no longer have guardianship over your daughter and not only that but the judge is going to decide as to whether your daughter has a vaccine or not well there are a number of false premises here and a number of um, indications that there is a fallacious premise upon which uh, somebody wants to engage you now what is that what does that mean well we humbly look at this we say we ask the lord to give us clarity so it is foolish now the bible tells us argue not with a fool according to his folly but the bible also says call no man fool so we have to understand what's being said. How do we identify and therefore avoid arguing with the fool if we can't decide that somebody is a fool? Well, the Bible doesn't say don't identify foolish behavior and don't identify foolish premises and don't, behave, don't uh, um, it says don't call, it says call no man fool says call no man fool why because we're not capable of um, fully understanding the psychological and mental capacity of an individual because it's unseen it's unspoken okay so we're, we're not qualified but God is qualified to call somebody a fool now foolish is different Ye foolish Galatians, foolish is the action of being fool of being foolish. It's not calling somebody a fool because they're made in the image and likeness of God, and you're not all knowing. So what qualifies you to make that judgment? But we can identify foolish behaviour, and I believe this is what's meant by argue not with a fool according to his folly. We can identify folly. It is God who calls the man a fool, if he so chooses. We're not qualified to do that, so we don't do it. But what we can do is identify foolish behavior. So we don't argue on the basis of foolish behavior. If somebody wants to have a foolish discussion, we don't engage them. So what jurisdictionality, what jurisdiction has a judge to tell a man his child must have a vaccine? 
or that he has no say in whether his child has a vaccine or not. And if somebody wanted to say, well, I want to revoke um, guardianship because of concerns I have on the basis of an unrelated incident coming to the attention of the courts, which is now under judicial review, the whole constitutionality of, of, of same being been challenged how then tell me I'm not asking you to think of foolish things I'm, I'm asking you just to think how this makes sense how, and identify the foolishness in it and seek the Holy Spirit to identify the foolishness in it how can somebody say well even though you've you know proven yourself to be a good father you've provided consistently when it was um, fair uh, to expect you to do so in instances you, you provided in all instances according to your better judgment and did not leave your child without so if somebody then says, "Well, you're no longer qualified because of something happens that we're not happened be, that we're not privy to." Even though no evidence is being presented, no solid evidence has been pre pre presented, is being presented. To argue with somebody vaguely about something come about vaguely, to argue about with somebody unlawfully about something that came about unlawfully is to acknowledge the unlawful premise of the thing you're now arguing about. Now, are you not vindicating the foolishness of the initial decision that they're now trying to point to get at again through another court? Continually trying to drag something in, get it recognised, even though it has no strength, no lawfulness to it. No, there's no jurisdiction, no juris the jurisdictionality. Is that a place? What judge can tell a man he must have his child vaccinated? Or that he has no say in his child being vaccinated? Good, bad or indifferent? Tell me what court can do this. Tell me what court can tell a man he no longer has guardianship over his child when he has been consistently providing for his child? Tell me, tell me this court, and I'll show you a fallacious court, and I'll show you an unlawful court. Tell me a, a solicitor's firm that would bring this forth, and I'll show you a, a solicitor's firm that is operating unlawfully, trying to bring something before an assumed jurisdictionality in a court where there is none. That would be unlawful. Show me a solicitor's firm that's trying to have an unlawful conversation in court unlawfully without jurisdiction and I'll show you a firm that is acting unlawfully. Trying to bring about an unlawful conversation without jurisdictionality. So I'm not angry. I'm not haughty. I suppose there is a righteous indignation to us to an extent but the Bible says be ye angry yet sin not and let not the sun go down on your anger I will expose unfruitful works of darkness I will always try to dissuade somebody from doing something unlawful I will always try to edify other people from the unlawful things and the persecutions and the adversities and the tribulations and the false witness that's been uh, bore against me I will always try to edify others and the body of Christ and when the devil comes against you and tries to rile you up and he tries to say oh you're angry about the oh you shouldn't be the oh you shouldn't be behaving like that he's arguing against your life before the courts of heaven this is no joke he's trying to whip the crown of everlasting life from your head. He's trying to sift you like wheat. 
This is not a game. And he will throw everything he has at you. Everything. And even things he doesn't have. And what I mean by that is, even things he doesn't have a genuine jurisdiction to throw at you, he'll try to throw them at you too. It's a facade. There's no weight in it. It's paper mache. There's no substance to it. It might look like something. It might be written on paper, headed paper, but there's nothing behind it. Because God institutes all authority on the earth. So just because they dress up in the wigs and sit in the seats doesn't mean they're acting lawfully. There are corrupt courts. There are corrupt judges. There are corrupt solicitors firms. Right? And things are brought about corruptly and unlawfully. Very often. Due process is not adhered to. Due process is not seen. But the problem is, when they show their hand before they even go into court, and the hand they show is unlawful at its root, blatantly unlawful, what judge can decide whether a child is vac uh, to be vaccinated or not? What court in the land has the necessary qualification and... and but a, but a father can decide both the faith and the treatment until that child is 18 or that that child receives and that is why somebody would be motivated to revoke guardianship even though guardianship cannot be revoked and argued on something totally unrelated to, the, to that person's ability to father their child and be a guardian. So a, a number of assumptions would have to be made. A number of lies uh, f unfounded would have to be presented to argue something that has no base. So the Bible says, and we as Christians must obey, when the Bible says in Proverbs 26, 4, 5, answer, answer not a fool according to his folly, lest you be like him yourself, Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. The self-confident fool thinks too highly of himself and his opinions, and he shares them freely. Now, so one thing I've learned is that I know nothing without the Holy Spirit guiding me and showing me. Nothing of value. The Bible says fear, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge is the understanding of the Holy One. And if the Lord removes his Holy Spirit and gives you over to a delusion, and gives you over to a reprobate mind because you keep pursuing it, then you've no one to blame but yourself. So I say to you, with grave warning, turn to the Lord before it's too late. Seek him while he might be found. Repent and put your trust in King Jesus. Be not wise in your own eyes. Lean not on your own understanding. And do expose the unfruitful works of darkness. Because the unfruitful works of darkness that are exposed in your life when the weapons come against you, not that we keep account for the trespasses that are done against us. In other words, that not that we're making a list and saying, oh, I'm going to get you back for that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get you back. The Lord is keeping an account in heaven. And when they say, oh, you're not allowed to bring a camera in here. Turn that camera off. What are you? No, I don't want to be on that. You're already, you're never alone. You're already, your whole life is being recorded. Your, the thoughts, your thoughts and, and the intents of your heart are being recorded in the heavens. Privacy is an illusion. You're a created being. An image bearer of the almighty God. He knows all about you. And he wants to purge all contaminants from your being. He wants you to be made incorruptible. And the enemy will try to provoke. 
pull on that, tug that, tug that. See if we can get them off that. Tug that, pull that one. You pull that one. You pull that. Now, do it now. Yeah, smiley face. Yeah, do that. Now, do the other thing. And it's triggers and buttons, emotional triggers and buttons. They want to pull your strings, make you do stuff. <laughs> Gives them a tickle. But we've got to be, what does the Bible say? Self controlled. So whenever you feel that rush that says, oh, I'm going to. No. Don't. Don't follow it. Be patient. Be self-controlled. But do deal with it. If you're moved to deal with something, deal with it righteously. Deal with it in the, in the way you see best, you see fit. Guided by God's Holy Spirit. Always with love in your heart. I hate. Please don't misunderstand. I hate Satan. But I love my fellow man. I hate what God hates. I do. Because it destroys people. Families. The whole lot. So, let us expose the unfruitful works of darkness. When people try to bring these fallacious arguments on false premises, they expose themselves. They expose their own evil intentions. So all we have to do is point to it and hope that it will deter them and dissuade them from following such folly. Because it can only be harmful. So we tell them in love, we do it in a way. It doesn't embarrass them. It doesn't, call, it doesn't give uh, away and room for embarrassment but gives them a quick and sharp rebuke edification and tries to dissuade them from that course of action if they then refuse to be dissuaded from that course of action what more can we do we are as christians lambs for the slaughter and we know it we know where dead men walking we know that now not everybody every one of us will be martyred but some of us will and the Lord knows who that is I could be one of those or I may not be I may be still toddling around in 50 years but I may not last the end of the week and so we look to the Holy Spirit for guidance we know that we're going to serve a purpose that is best suited and that we've been knit together in our mother's womb to fulfill and to carry out. We know that. The enemy will try to provoke you, try to pull your, pull your tail, pull your strings, all of those phrases. He'll try it all. Because what does he want to do? He wants to shake you from the vine. He wants you to fall away from God. He wants to train you into habits that are not in the Holy Spirit wants to train you up in the ways of evil and he wants to provoke you to return to the world but that won't happen to the saints the Bible says no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against you you shall confute this is the inheritance of the saints now the enemy will try anything, remember that. You think your race is over? Salvation is not a feeling. You run your race till you take your last breath and you keep your eyes on the Lord. Because seductions are in the world. Curses, spells, hexes, lotions, potions, vexes. Incantations, enchantments, lures, seductions, baits. You call it what you want. They've been there. And they continue in the world. They don't just stop. The attacks are going to keep coming. 
right up until the end. Okay, so be prepared and stand firm. But at the same time, do everything in your power to edify other people, but keep yourself in subjection. There are strict orders. Don't get angry sometimes, but then sin not. Don't be drawn to arrogance, haughtiness. God hates haughty eyes. So make your point and don't, please don't argue with a fool according to, to his folly. Because if, if an issue, if a matter is dealt with ex parte and they're just further implicating themselves, they're just acting unlawfully if they continue on that course. A judge telling somebody whether they should get vaccinated or not. Or even a judge saying, yeah, mommy can decide there. Because if daddy cared, he'd show up to court. Something, you know, something along those lines. But no, because daddy does care, he's not going to show up to court and have a fallacious conversation with somebody on an unlawful premise. You see, we choose when we're going to show up and when we're not going to show up. And we do so wisely. Not in the absence of care, but in care. But in carefulness, not for a lack of thinking on the matter, but because we thought about the matter in the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. And we weren't drawn away by anger and a tendency to overreact in a way a daddy might. If he was that way driven and he wasn't walking in peace, he might say, well, who did they think they are? And he might react in a way that's aggressive and they say oh look look aggressive so no walk in peace edify rebuke but we rebuke gently a rebuke is abrupt and straight to the point but it's done gently because we're trying to snatch our brother from the fire we're not trying to dishearten him and demotivate him no because you then you know it's coming from satan Satan is the one who demotivates. He bluffs. He says, "No, you're not of you're not of of the Lord." Right? So we don't buy that because we're of Jesus, and He shows us. And you, if you think that one day you feel very close to the Lord and you feel His Holy Spirit and He's given you peace for that time, if you think that's it, then until the, the end of your days and you should remain in that peace or you you've lost your salvation, don't be tricked by Satan. Because after the dove comes the devil. It's all oh, you've had your little moment now, let's get back to. Him. Right? And he'll come to attacking you again. And you cause so you gotta pull up your big boy trousers. And you don't know what the Lord is gonna allow him to come at you with next because you're getting stronger. So if you think you're gonna get holidays, you're not. Your labours follow you in tow. They're following you around. It, that's the thing about a Christian. A Christian isn't going around starting, you know, starting things. The things are starting them. They're following them around. They're following us around. The troubles are following us. The adversities are finding us. The tribulations are finding us because we're Christians, because we're the light. They're trying to snuff it out. So we walk in love. And in love, we continue to propagate the light, disseminate the light. Because light is love, love is light. Blessings, beloved. Stand firm and trust the Lord that he is above all authorities, principalities, powers, rulers and dominions. Blessings, beloved. I love you. Jesus is king forevermore. And we, his children, no matter what Satan says, stand firm, stand strong. Blessings. Amen.